Hi, it's Mr. Skelton again, and in this lesson we're going to take the patterns that we were doing in the last one and include the actual notation so that we can put those, uh, those two elements together, what we're actually doing with our fingers and what we see uh, so that we're, we're reading. Um, I will do a quick, re very, very quick review of the patterns as, as we go through each string. Um, however, if you don't really know them, you know, if, if you can't just rattle them off the top of your head, please go back and do the first video. Uh, that will save you uh, a lot of time. And we'll do it string by string. Uh, again, you know, I've separated out the instruments uh, for the sake of time. Um, this, this is the second of what I think are going to be four, maybe five videos total. Uh, so there are a couple more steps in, involved in this, but this is probably um, the most critical uh, step because we're now actually getting into the notation. Uh, we will be using, you know, you should be using your uh, arm uh, fingerboard for this. I do want to stress that, uh, again, good hand uh, shape, keep it nice and curved and relaxed, you know, come down on the top, you know, not sideways or anything like that, and do try to get the half steps where they occur. Uh, I'll show, well, again, I'll show those just very quickly ahead of uh, each string, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, cellos, starting on the C string, which in this case is the side of our arm where the thumb is. Remember, the half step is going to be between the E and the F. So in other words, we're, we have to skip the middle, middle finger, the second finger, because that would only be a half step uh, between C and D, or uh, between D and E, rather. So C, D. E, F, open one, three, four, C, D, E, F. Here we are down here on the C string. Notice most of the notes, uh, but certainly not all of them, but most of them have those ledger lines. That's one way to help recognize C string notes. You can't play those notes on any other string um, unless you tune them differently. So we have C, D, E, and F. Now take a look at this uh, one more time and I want you to practice that pattern on its own. Here is the cascade pattern. And if you need to know what that is, go back to the first video. Practice this one. And finally, here is the broken thirds pattern. So you've practiced this one with the letters that you should know. And if you have difficulty with this one, keep practicing the, the first two, the scale and the, uh, and the cascade. G string, same pattern. Of course, one string over. Uh, we have different letters because it's a different string. So G, A, B, C. So again, we skip that middle finger because that's that would be a half step between A and B. So G, A, B, C. Now we start on your open G, the first line uh, at the bottom. G, A, B, and C. Now take a look at this uh, one more time, and I want you to practice that pattern on its own. Here is the cascade pattern. And if you need to know what that is, go back to the first video. Practice this one. And finally, here is the broken thirds pattern. So you've practiced this one with the letters that you should know. And if you have difficulty with this one, keep practicing the, the first two, the scale and the, uh, and the cascade. On the D string, the uh, half step is going to change. It's not going to be between the third and fourth finger. It's now between the first and second. So we have D, E, F, G. And D string, now we're the middle line of the staff. We should be able to recognize where those open strings are. you gotta know, got to know those. <laughs> if you can't find the open strings, then you're not going to be able to find the, where the fingers go. So there's D, E, F, and G. Now, take a look at this uh, one more time, 
and I want you to practice that pattern on its own. Here is the cascade pattern. And if you need to know what that is, go back to the first video. Practice this one. And finally, here is the broken thirds pattern. So you practice this one with the letters that you should know. And if you have difficulty with this one, keep practicing the, the first two, the scale and the, uh, and the cascade. Finally, we go to the A string. So now we're on the other edge of our arm where the pinky is. And it's the same pattern as the D string. So A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A string starts right on that top line. That's a way you can help recognize it and just goes up from there. So there's A, B, C, and D. Now take a look at this uh, one more time and I want you to practice that pattern on its own. Here is the cascade pattern, and if you need to know what that is, go back to the first video. Practice this one. And finally, here is the broken thirds pattern. So you practice this one with the letters that you should know, and if you have difficulty with this one, keep practicing the, the first two, the scale and the, uh, and the cascade. Okay, so practice those. Um, practice them a lot. You need to be able to see a pattern of what notes are on what string very easily. Uh, because next video, we will start looking at combining strings. And uh, then after that, we'll uh, add things like sharps and flats and other changes uh, to it. But the, the basic pattern will at least be there. So if we can at least get it so we can see notes that say, oh, that's on the A string or, or what have you. It makes it a lot easier. It'll help you learn your letter names uh, so you can pick out an individual note, but also you'll know where to play it. That's what's going to make it useful for you. All right, thank you.